Hello, I'm Amy Muller, co-founder and director of Community Education and Get Satisfaction. Today we're going to chat briefly about managing sentiment and preparing for and responding to negativity in your community. I know negativity is something that many companies are fearful of when considering launching a public customer community. Unfortunately, negativity is actually an inescapable reality of public discourse. However, it's important to remember that if someone has a need to express themselves about something they're unhappy with, they're going to find some place to do it, whether you've provided that place for them or not. By being an active participant in the conversation, you have the opportunity to change the tone and even change the sentiment. In the worst case scenario, you've done some damage control, and in the best, you've converted a naysayer or an angry customer and anyone else who may be participating in or viewing that thread into a fan and even an evangelist. Back in the early days of our company's life, we released a design that had some poorly phrased text that some people took offense to. A scathing post was made on a blog run by a web app company called 37 Signals. In the comments of their blog post, there was a mass pile on by their readers. This was clearly a major PR disaster for us. What was interesting though was experiencing the pressure cooker of a real-time PR disaster and how we handled it through a quick multi-channel response. We put up several blog posts of our own. We posted a topic in our community and responded to topics that users were posting in our community. We posted on Twitter and we held an immediate live webcast to address the issue and answer questions from the viewers. Most importantly though, we took the bullet and we learned. And throughout all of it, we represented our vision through our actions and stayed true to our brand. While that was literally one of the most difficult days in our company's history, it ended up being one of the best. We received loads and loads of positive feedback for the way we handled the situation. And as my co other co-founder, Lane Becker, wrote in a follow-up blog post to that situation, you know that old quote from JFK? The Chinese use two brush strokes to write the word crisis. One brush stroke stands for danger, the other for opportunity. In a crisis, be aware of the danger, but recognize the opportunity. An overall positive tone in your community is vital to community success. So how do you do this? First of all, you lead by example. You do this by how you, as the community manager, participate in your community. If you've effectively set a positive tone and earned the respect of your most active participants, they will be there to defend you and your company when someone is on the attack. Here's an example um, in One True Fan. Somebody came in complaining about a little kind of buggy issue and Eric, who's actually a co-founder, empathized with him. Frustrating for me too. It's been happening to me for about a week. The customer came back with, no worries, bro. I know you guys are working hard on the back end. I just wanted to make sure it was a known issue. That's the kind of back and forth that you can have when you have set a positive tone in your community that's a consistent positive tone and your customers sort of learn like this is sort of the mode of behavior here in this community. So next you want to set the intention for your community. In a get satisfaction community, you can do this using the message to your community. This space is yours to customize the text, HTML, or even an image or video embed. Use it to communicate to your community what the intention is for that space, which could even include a message about how people are expected to participate. And next you want to create topics that set the right tone. Again, in the Prezi community. Um, so you want to share updates, ask questions of the community, get their input on some ideas you've been considering. As you can see here, their community manager posted a topic soliciting ideas for developing their presentation software for iPad. Have a clear set of guidelines. All users of Get Satisfaction are expected to abide by our community guidelines, which can be found at GetSatisfaction.com backslash community underscore guidelines and also encouraged to follow the tenets of our company customer pact, which can be found at getsatisfaction.com slash ccpact. So you can refer your users, your members to those documents. And additionally, you can create and refer members to your own community guidelines. The important thing is to refer back to them and enforce them. You've done what you can to set a positive tone. While that gives you the best foundation to work from, it still doesn't prevent having to deal with negativity in your community from time to time. The important thing is to understand the different types of negativity, be able to identify them and have a plan in place for how to best deal with them. The community support team here at Get Satisfaction has actually put together a framework for preparing for and dealing with negativity in your community. We've identified five main categories of negativity, and this isn't gonna necessarily be an all-encompassing list, so if you've seen trends in categories of negativity that aren't represented here in what I'm about to present, we'd love to hear about them. First up, there's product or service disasters. There can be a negative backlash when you've released a flawed product or a buggy version of your software or have had a major service outage. We heard recently from Viola's community manager about a, a situation they went through a few months back where they had a DOS tag at Yola and um, 
this was a major service disaster for all of their customers. It brought their customers' websites down. But how they handled it was really what was key here, and the fact that Yola had already done so much groundwork for setting a positive tone in their community. Another category of negativity is a marketing or PR disaster. So maybe your product or service didn't fail, but there was some other type of PR or marketing disaster. And this requires some delicate handling and might even involve um, might even involve getting your marketing or PR department involved in the response. Um, an example of this is what I spoke about earlier with our own brouhaha after the 37 Signals blog post. A third category of negativity is just a good old-fashioned troll attack. Trolls are those individuals whose primary or even sole purpose is, dis is to disrupt an online community. They often harass moderators and other members, they fan the flames, they name call, and they're never interested in a productive outcome. There was actually another very timely article in the New York Times this week. This one was about internet trolls. When dealing with trolls, it's important to first of all know how to identify them. Once you've identified a troll and it's clear they're not interested in a productive conversation, it's best to just leave the conversation. Don't egg them on, don't give them attention. That's really what they're looking for. And if there's someone who is being consistently disruptive and abusive in your community, get in touch with our support team. We will ban users who are violating our community guidelines. The next one that we've come up with is demonstration by a crowd. This is a situation where a group of people have targeted and made an organized attack on a company. It's a rare occurrence, but has happened. These events are generally short-lived and can be nipped quickly if handled well. An example of this what happened in the Zappos community um, a couple years ago where uh, PETA decided one day to target Zappos because they were selling products that contained fur. They came into the Zappos community, um, several different users came in, created accounts, and created, you know, I don't know, maybe about 10 or a dozen different topics accusing Zappos of carrying fur products. What they did with using the moderation tools is first they picked one of these topics that they actually wanted to give a full response to. So they were going to make that the canonical topic about this issue because they realized just trying to brush the issue under the rug wasn't going to help anything. That would just fan the flames of, of these um, users. Then they archived all the other topics, merged them into this topic, redirected the people who posted those to this topic, and archived all of those. And then they came in with their official response. Our final um, category that we came up with is when you have an individual disaster or problem. This is just when your product or service has failed a single customer. It's not a widespread issue that has affected many, but one customer has had a difficult time. As long as that customer is not a troll, the resolution path is generally pretty straightforward. And again, it's an opportunity to really shine for that customer, who may in turn tell several more people about the positive experience that came out of that, thus becoming an evangelist. So when creating a preparation plan, be sure you have an action plan for each of the categories that we spoke about. And they may be the same for many of them, but be sure you're prepared for all likely inevitabilities. Have an escalation path. What is the line of first defense, the second, the third, if necessary? Know your response policies. Are there certain situations where you need to consult your marketing or PR department or your legal department or some other arm of your organization before responding? Prevent a pile on. Be prepared to respond quickly so that you can get a handle on this situation as quickly as possible before a pile on takes place. But then what happens when you do actually, you know, come face to face with some kind of a negative situation in your community? You need to have a reaction plan, a response plan. You need to evaluate the impact of it and consider the source. Is the person who's initially um, posting about this a customer or not? That might determine how you respond uh, and act your escalation path if necessary. Does anyone else need to be involved? Consider the consequences of non-response if that's your policy. Again, have an action plan for this, a standard statement ready to go. Monitor sentiment in real time on all social media channels. So you want to be monitoring, monitoring Twitter and Facebook blog posts about your company so that you can go and respond in all of the appropriate places. It's a really great idea like what we did with Get Satisfaction is to have you know a blog post on your own blog or a topic in your own community that's sort of your definitive response to it and then you can point all the other, other channels to that spot um, so that you can kind of keep the story contained there and, and manage it from there. Mm -hmm.